Hello everyone, this is Reza and welcome to the next video of intermediate rigging in Maya. In the previous video, we set up the IKFK chain for our arms. I've gone ahead and did the same thing that we learned from the previous video and applied that to the right arm, including attributes. So you can see the um, attributes on every control is now accessible. The only m change I made in the script is I changed the letter from uh, L to R. So you need to make sure that you put the attribute on the right wrist first and from that make sure that the name for the custom attribute matches this name. Of course the attribute is going to be float minimum to zero maximum to one and it, you need to make sure it's keyable too. Now before I go and set up the IKFK control for clavicle I'm going to go ahead and actually create the global control. If you remember in the character rigging for beginners, that's the first control that we created and we eventually tied every single control to global control. Very, very important. So I'm just going to double click on it, give it a yellow color. Usually for the left, I give all the controls the red color. For the central controls, I give the character yellow. So I'm just going to go to top make sure the control is not too big and not too small so something around that should do the trick back to perspective i'm going to freeze transformation and i believe that there's slightly under the grid yep so i'm going to just move it up just a tad you don't need to be super accurate with it um well obviously i am so 0.4 did the trick for me and didn't do freeze transformation so freeze transformation and ctrl there is no left and right it's at the center so global zero one so that's our global control now we are going to use this in this tutorial for the very first time we'll be parenting one of the locators for the shoulder and clavicle to this global control and gradually but surely move everything into that global control all right with that out of the way let's start with the tutorial i'm going to select the probably bring back one of the controls that we have let's see what we can do here we might actually use this control for our clavicle so i'm going to hold down j and move this and rotate this in x move this back to here and position it carefully probably too big again the idea is it needs to be easy for animators to access so something like that is pretty good of course we need to name this so this is going to be ctrl l clavicle 01 of course the main thing is to freeze transformation and after that we need to set the pivot and group this and rename the group so let's do it freeze transformation and hold down D and V and snap to the clavicle probably it's a good idea for me to turn off textures just to make sure that the point yep that's accurate now it's time to group this so I'm just going to group it via the outliner and I'm going to use the exact same name so clavicle underscore grp01 that's the same naming convention that we're going to go with the control needs to be recolored obviously which is uh, an optional step and we don't need a translate and we don't need scale but before i lock and hide translate and scale i'm just gonna mirror it to the other side because i know for a fact that i need the exact same setup for the other side uh, usually I pause the video and leave this to the viewers, but um, this one is uh, just very easy. So I'm just going to control D, control G and minus one in the scale. I'm going to go and unparent and get rid of the extra group node. And of course, rename all the L's to R. You can do it through search for and replace command as well. Now, all I need to do is to freeze transform and recolor 
So the color is going to be blue and freeze transformation. Uh, it's already there. Uh, so that's done. Just going to select both controls, select translate and scale. We don't need to move it. We don't need to scale it and lock in height. Now let's take care of the connections. So let's select the driver, which is the clavicle control. Make sure not to select the group node, but the curve and shift select the clavicle and then go to rigging menu set. Hopefully you are in the menu, rigging menu set and go to orient. You want to maintain offset to remain enabled and then you go apply. While I'm here, I'm going to do the same thing for the other bone. Apply. Now, IK is now done. You can just rotate the clavicle and have a shoulder shrug effect. Very cool. We still need to look after FK and to create FK, we need to have the movement via the locators. So let's see how we can set up that. Now those two locators should be responsible to rotate this FK chain in local and global scale. The local scale will be parented to the FK controls. The global will be parented to the global control that we just made. All right. So let's go ahead and select nothing. Make sure nothing is selected and just create a locator. Now Maya puts the locator right at the center. Now I'm going to parent this locator to this FK chain. And for now, I want to have the right orientation. To get the right orientation, I'm going to select the group FK shoulder and shift select the locator and go to constrain parent constraint. I can just reset the settings and turn off maintain offset. The whole idea is not to have any offset so we can have the locator at the center of the shoulder joint. And I'm going to go add. If I switch to wireframe now, we see that the locator has got the right orientation and that's exactly what we want. I'm going to go and delete parent constraint that we have and duplicate this locator because now both have the right orientation. All I need to do is to rename them properly. And of course, every time I want to rename, I try to use the uh, naming convention that I have already. So I'm going to go to control L FK shoulder zero one, and I'm going to name this instead of CTRL, I'm going to call this LOS, LOC for locator, LFK shoulder. One is going to be global, one is going to be local. So local 01, and I'm going to copy the name. The other one is going to be LOC LFK shoulder, global 01. Now we want these two locators to drive our FK chain via an orient constraint. So with these two selected, I'm going to control select the FK shoulder and I'm going to go to constrain, orient constraint, maintain offset on, I'm going to add. So now we have an orient constraint under our CTRL L FK shoulder group node. It's time to place them into the right location. I don't want these two to just be here in the root of our outliner, they have locations that they need to be. The local can be parented to the clavicle bone. So I'm going to select the local locator, shift select the clavicle bone and press the P key. The global one will be parented under the newly created global control that we created. Press the P key to parent. Now it's time to create a custom attribute on both clavicle controls so we can blend between local and global. In other words, we can just have the chain and any orientation that takes place 
on the clavicle, we can ask that to follow local movement, IK or FK. So with that said, I'm going to select both of these guys and I'm going to go to modify, add attribute. I can name the attribute lock, minimum of zero, maximum of one. And I'm going to press OK. Now I have the attribute created on our controls. Now from here, I can go ahead and select the orient constraint that we created for our FK shoulder group. Shift control, the custom control that we created for clavicle because we have the attribute on it. With these two selected, I'm going to go ahead and open node editor. I can go ahead and create a new tab. And with this button right here, I can drop them in. These four shape nodes, we don't need. All I need is the group node. I'm gonna press three on it because that's where I have access to the lock custom attribute. And of course the orient constraint, press control, press three on it to expand that. Select the CTRL FK shoulder. I'm gonna expand group node for clavicle control. And I'm gonna control click on the clavicle and make the FK controls part of the clavicle control. So, so select the FK controls, shift select the parent, which is clavicle control and press P. So FK group is part of the clavicle control. Now let's make the connections. So we have the lock attribute that we just created on both clavicle controls that goes into the global and for local weights, I need to reverse the value. And the way to do that is by pressing tab on the keyboard and just type in reverse. Simple as that. The only thing that you need to be mindful when you work with reverse is usually the normal channel doesn't work. So if I try to go from lock to input, you can see it's been grayed out simply because you need to target only one channel and the channel that you target for in, you target the same channel for your out attribute. So go from lock to input X and from output X to local. Now, if I go ahead and minimize and select my clavicle control and orient it, You can see that I'm doing the IK. But now if I select the lock to zero and try to orient, I'm orienting FK. Very cool. That gives me the freedom to switch between local and global controls anytime I want. Now, if you want the value of zero, to control the IK and value of one to control the FK. That's very simple. You simply go to Windows, Node Editor, and you just reverse these two. So the output of the reverse value go to global, and then it's a direct connection from local to the lock attribute. Now, if I select the clavicle control, Let's set the value for lock attribute to zero. And now if I rotate or orient, this should only move the IK. But if I set this attribute to one and rotate, FK controls should follow along. And I can select any of these controls and set IK FK switch to FK. And you can see that the chain is also following along. That's really cool. So if you want to activate FK, all you need to do for shoulder, elbow and wrist is to go ahead and set IKFK to one. For clavicle, you set the lock to one. Now you can use this script that you have from the previous video to duplicate this lock control 
onto other controls in your hand as well so you don't need to constantly select the clavicle control to access the lock it's just very easy I'm going to bring the script editor and all I need to do is to specify where I have on what control I have the attribute I have the control currently on CTRLL clavicle 01 what's the name of the attribute the name of the attribute is lock I'm gonna check everything else now apply this on selected controls add an attribute it needs to be float minimum of zero maximum of one and of course the attribute should be keyable so let's think about what we want to have this attribute on we want to have it pretty much on all the controls that includes the elbow fk shoulder fk elbow fk wrist and even ik control i can just select everything and just right click and go execute and now you can see the lock attribute is now available on every control that i select on my left hand that's very cool all right one last step is to clean up we don't need these locators anymore so i can just go to local scale x y and z and set them all to zero so they're there but they can't be seen just go ahead and follow these steps and apply the exact same steps into the right hand side clavicle chain and make the IKFK control for clavicle activated and that should do the trick in the next video we are going to finish the hand by adding finger joints I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching see you in the next video